Because what, what's the policy? Huh? Well, the policy is very simple, isn't it? It's an essentially an economic policy, a physical economic policy from beginning to end. And there are things which accord with the physical economic policy which go with it. And that's what we're going to present. Because anything else would be a tragic error. You have these run-on policies uh, that we, we hear about all the time. People come out with one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. Yeah? Yeah. And that oh, it's open-ended. We don't need it. The policy is to save the U.S. economy and to save the world economy by virtue of saving the U.S. economy. What does that mean? Well, it means a number of things. It means especially restoring our economy by a Glass-Steagall standard. But a Glass-Steagall standard will not be sufficient. It's not adequate. We have to change from a monetary system to a credit system. You cannot possibly save the United States on the basis of Glass-Steagall alone. That's just the first step. What you're going to do essentially is dump all this garbage huh, called Wall Street and Boston Bank money. We're going to dump the whole crap in their lap. And when they say, well, who's going to pay the bill? <laughs> we say, buddy, you're going to pay the bill. But we don't have the money. You owe us. Oh, no, we, you don't owe. we don't owe you anything. You have a different banking system. U.S. federal guarantees for banks doesn't exist with your banking system. You're hung out, and then people are going to scream. But you're going to close these banks. So what? But you're going to take their money away. No, they already lost it. They gambled. We don't pay gambling debts. The United States does not pay gambling debts. Private gambling debts. You lost? Okay, buddy, tough luck. You have to find something else to do pretty quick, won't you? Maybe we can help you out. We have a back door there for guys like you. Well, the key thing is going to a credit system, canceling the monetary system and going to a credit system, which means now we have an open ability to build up the economy rapidly. No other way possible. Anybody disagrees? Not possible. They're wrong. Well, we're going to insist on this change. Okay, then go shoot yourself. Best thing you can do. M most merciful thing I can do for you is suggest you shoot yourself. Because you're going to feel you had, or, or wish you had, if you, don't get, if you don't allow these reforms to occur. There's no need to argue these. You will obey, or you'll go down. You'll go to hell, and I'll, I'll encourage you to get, make that trip. Because there's no possible way on this planet you can save this nation in particular without doing exactly that. There are two things must happen. Glass-Steagall must happen. Exactly with every jot and tittle, exactly as Franklin Roosevelt wrote it. No changes. None. So that's simple, isn't it? No room for argument. It's already settled. It's proven, tested, so forth. Worked just fine. Worst thing ever happened to us, we, we canceled it. All right, now that we're going to go to a credit system, it's in the Constitution, buddy. And your system didn't work. Your system ruined us. So you shut up. We don't want to hear from you. Because you've already had your chance with having a monetary system. Yeah? You're finished. You're out of business. Besides, you're bankrupt, aren't you? You just lost all your bank, all your, you know, all your credit system. You lost it. It's worthless. Nobody can pay those debts. They're fictitious. They're gambling debts. We don't pay gambling debts. So you're bankrupt. You better figure out what you're going to do for a new career. It's not going to be in banking. Hmm? We just shut you down on that one. But only you could, the point is this. In, when you operate from a monetary system, the value is attributed to the monetary system. 
Therefore, you're limited in the amount of credit you can generate based on the interest of the monetary system. That is, on the amount of money outstanding. Huh? In a credit system, you don't do that. We do the same thing the United States did to get out of bankruptcy when we had won the Revolutionary War. We went to a credit system which is in the Constitution. That means the federal government is now responsible for all of the currency that exists in the nation. No other currency exists. No other currency is allowed. U.S. currency is based on a credit system. And therefore the credit authorized by the nation state and it's the application of that credit in a monetary expression or otherwise is a responsibility of the federal government. Under this system, a credit system, we can supply as much credit as we think discreet and useful for the nation and for its purposes. In other words, there is not going to be a question of is, is the money available for needs. If the need exists and the means for feeding the needs is just, they will get the credit. Because we've got to restore this nation, not only to get, you know, get by thing, get by tomorrow, and all this fakery going now. We have to do that. If you do not have that a campaign for presidency, based on these two considerations, you have shit. It's not worth anything. Because we must have enough credit available, for, uttered by the federal government, under federal law, under the intention of the federal constitution, in order to supply the equivalent of full employment for our people, and also for, in addition to that, compensation for people who can't help themselves. This includes retirement, fees, all these kinds of things. It all has to be covered. And the rate, the ability to cover this thing depends upon the amount of credit we are able to utter for productive purposes. In other words, employing less, cutting employment, cutting back on employment, cutting back on support for, for the age of the, and so forth, is a killer. But the, a monetary system requires you to do exactly that. You are limited by the money in the, in the system. Well, we are limited by the worthy investment in the system, the worthy productive investment in the system. And the more people employed, the better. The higher the level of skill, the better. The, the higher the technology, the better. More capital intensive, the technology, the better. So therefore, our ability to meet the needs of the population with credit is based on a credit system. Whereas a monetary system, the amount of credit that is going to be uttered is based on a monetarist system, where the amount of money outstanding going through banks and so forth. So the private sector is actually, in effect, controlling, to a large degree, the, the aggregate amount of credit available. You can, some people will get money anyway, but that will be limited by the monetarist conception of a system. We're insisting that everybody who's able to work is going to have a chance at not only employment or household security from employment or similarly. And we can absorb those who we have to carry who are not going to be productively employed. Because of the more people that are productively employed, the more people you can cover who have need that they ca cannot work themselves. Very simple principle, which Hamilton and others came to in the, you know, after the victory over the British, where this problem of a credit system came up. So we, ha you cannot, the nation cannot survive unless you go to a credit system rather than a monetary system. This nation will not survive unless you do that. Now, somebody has to stop being a bullshit artist like most of these politicians are and tell people what the truth is that they cannot dare violate. 
You know, there are certain truths you cannot violate. Don't say democracy. Democracy has been made a dirty word. Almost as dirty as the people that talk about it. Because the, the question is science. And you have to have a system which provides for the, all the people an adequate protection and promotion of their welfare, either as in terms of their productive labor or the equivalent, or in terms of things which they are entitled to because they're human beings, whether they can do, it, do the job themselves or not. And those are the two foundations upon which any program for election of anybody in the United States, especially President Norton Down, must depend. And we have to rum, ram that through with no change in subject, no shift to other subjects in terms of national policy for the presidential election except this. And you've got to ram it through. Don't try to cater to people's opinion. We know what their opinion has done. We have seen the effects since the killing of, of, of Jack Kennedy. We've seen the effects of their choices. Yeah. We've lost the nation. We're victims of the British Empire. We have nothing, no rights whatsoever. And what remains of them is being taken away. We're going to have to fight the American Revolution all over again. And that's what this, that's what this presidential campaign will be. We're going to make it that. Presidential campaign is that. To, es huh? to establish the principles for which the American Revolution was fought, for which the Civil War was fought, which Roosevelt fought for. Hmm? That's the constant, that's the party platform, the national platform, and we're going to make a stick by not getting involved in discussion of bullshit. Don't discuss these things, because once you start to discuss these things, the subject is changed from those things which are essential to things that are spe matters of people's opinions. And people's opinions aren't worth anything. The opinions of our present members of Congress, for the most part, ain't worth anything. They're not doing anything that's actually going to save this nation. We're not doing anything that's going to save civilization. We want to talk about this, we want to talk about that, like Obama. We're just going to have some conversation, says Obama. Well, you know where he's going to get his conversation. No, this is the, the point is, this is reality. If you have a conviction, which it is based on the interest of the nation, the interest of civilization, that is a mandatory requirement. What is required to, for human beings and for the na people, the human beings of nations, is not something for gambling, is not something for chatter, is not something for talk, is something for action. And the only discussion is a discussion of the scientific basis for the, for the decisions. And there is a clear scientific basis. All the other thing about opinion um, isn't worth anything, especially now. We look at what, what is done to us since Jack Kennedy was killed. Look what has been done to us. Everything was done to us was wrong was even evil. And people, our people, other people have been debating these issues, so-called issues. There's the only one issue. Save mankind. Save the United States from destruction. And what does not come up to that isn't worth discussing. It has, there's no right, inherent right in that. The right is one is the fulfillment of responsibility. The res primary responsibility is saving this nation for us 
and saving our people. The rights of the individual. If the rights of the individual are inviolable, how can you make them a subject of debate as to whether they should be honored or not? How can you bring into thing, question things which are obviously wrong in terms of their effect on the people? Just because somebody says, well, I choose to believe. Well, you can go choose to believe all you want to, but do you know where you're going to take it? Huh? Look, there's a distinction here which is very important in terms of this discussion. Because the, the, there is a treatment of saying that there's an open field for everybody's opinion. Uh, but that's not true. It never was true. You had, that idea was used to create dictatorship. Huh? Be, how was dictatorship created? By being democratic. Huh? Because by having an open field where everybody's opinion was supposed to be equal with everybody else's opinion, it produced a system of chaos and disorder huh? in the thinking of people which repeatedly created the crisis which was used to create a tyranny. Plato said, quite explicitly. Exactly. Huh? So therefore the point is, you have to define what are the boundaries which prevent that kind of policy from being considered. Obviously if you don't, if you have bound, if you don't have boundaries in, in law, in politics, if you don't have boundaries that are constraining what you do and don't do, you're going to have chaos. And that's what you've got now. The problem of the American people is, is the chaos and the way, their way of thinking. Look at the Republican conventions. Look at this latest, latest fruit cake operation out there. Right? It's, it's the diversity, the pride in diversity of ideas. You don't know whether you're a chimpanzee or a crocodile or you know, a fish. You know? Everybody's here, we're all here, fish, crocodiles and all. Uh, hmm. Platypuses. Uh, platypuses, yes, also. But that, 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 the point is there are constraints. It's the principle of science. There are constraints which bound what is acceptable. The idea of a principle is a constraint. Hmm? It's not a choice, it's a constraint. It's not an option, it's a constraint. Because it's only when you constrain things that shouldn't happen, policies that lead to things that shouldn't happen, when that consequence is obvious, or where you simply have such a diversity of opinion that reason does not exist, as in we saw in this Republican sideshow that went on recently in Iowa. We don't know what was there. We don't know what the votes were uh, in the secret ballot. We don't, we, the ballots were not available. We don't know who signed the ballots. Uh, we don't know who authorized the counting. It was all secret. Nobody was told. There was no transparency whatsoever in that damn election. Everything was allowed. That's democracy. And then the Ch Dick Cheney's of the world laughed their asses off at the fools who believe in that stuff. Because that's how Dick Cheney made, made his mark. Huh? By being anti-democratic. Why did that work? Because democracy didn't work as they had defined it. So therefore the fascists were brought in by people who were desperate because the free trade system wasn't working. And everybody had a different idea of what the problem was. Who's going to be killed? Who's going to be eaten? Who's going to be uh, fed to? Something. Uh. So they get desperate. Then you get this anarchy comes forward in terms of a destructive anarchy of some people. I'm going to survive, but that he won't survive. I will win, but he won't. And then they can divide again and again and again on pettier and pettier issues of difference. And then what happens? The dictatorship comes in. Because the law is not existent. 
Opinion exists, not law. And when people make opinion law, then you've got chaos. When you get chaos, you get dictatorship, possibly human extinction. Truth, scientifically definable truth, is what's essential, not opinion. Opinion has destroyed the United States because there was no constitution. And the constitution is what bounds a nation in its choices, available choices. You can be free in anything except something that violates principle. But you must be ruled by principle. And the United States was based on the discovery of principle. That was what the issue was in the Constitutional Convention particularly. It wasn't always satisfactory. It wasn't always the right, exactly the right choices. But the principle of that choice was there. It was shown clearly by Lincoln. It was shown by Franklin Roosevelt that there are certain matters which are not matters of choice because they're matters of principle. And when you're in a position as I am to set forth notions of what should govern this nation and the world, you are not very truthful to yourself unless you are committed to knowing what those constraints called principles are. And most of these constraints take the form of economic policy. And that's my specialty, economic policy. And if we don't have the right economic policy, this nation is already doomed. Therefore, what we're proposing is absolutely the ab indispensable basis for the continued existence of the United States. And that is Glass-Steagall to get rid of the parasites. Just let them starve to death if they wish to. They brought it upon themselves. They gambled and gambled and gambled. And they lost the gamble. Their money isn't worth anything. So they may die. Not our fault. We have to save the nation. We have to have economic policies that will save the nation. We can do it. We've got almost enough time to do it. But if we do it, no. No? No, we didn't? No, we have. If we stick to this, we'll make a spectacle of what we're doing. But if you compromise it, we won't. No compromise. It's a constitutional issue, and only constitutional discussion can do it. If you win the constitutional issue, you win everything. If you stick to it, you go to something else, you're going to lose everything. So that's what we can do tomorrow, you know. I think we got. And the discussion we're going to have tomorrow, however long it takes, I don't think there's any limit tomorrow that we're going to put in advance on. The discussion is going to go on as much. It's going to be the convention. It's going to be the constitutional convention of our effort. We're going to air this thing until it's clear back and forth to everyone involved.